Okay, so this happened this week. I have a son and he's nine years old and I have a daughter that is going to turn eight in December. So they're like 15, 17 months apart mm-hmm. and just in that fun stage. So <laughs> they were roughhousing this week, aka fighting, <laughs> fighting, really not roughhousing, fighting. <laughs> and uh, Isaac kicked Adele in the face and the nose. And Adele got a good knee to the chin for Isaac. But we were afraid that Adele broke her nose. Yeah. So I had to go take her to the doctor. We went to urgent care and they did x-rays. Her nose is not broken. So you can all rest assured. But what it was just crazy, looks slightly different than it used to. <laughs> well, it was just bruised. And okay. it was like one of those things where I was like, I don't think it's broken, but I'm going to feel like a really bad mom if she has a crooked face the rest of her life. And we could have said it. So, um, but what's crazy, this is the whole point of the story is uh she has all of her adult teeth like up here in her jawline and like all of her adult teeth down here and then we could see her uh wisdom teeth it was just oh in the x-ray yes okay so she still like has baby teeth but then in the x-ray you can see the adult yeah and it's like so weird just to see all these adult teeth in her jaw Mm -hmm. like yeah it's like a shark that is weird (laughs) maybe she is a shark maybe (laughs) she could be baby shark (laughs) You're welcome for all those people that that song is now stuck in your head. <laughs> yeah. um, Zeno, congrats on, I, I don't want to talk about this much, so I'll just like say congratulations. Um, integration slash one of the first plugins to the Superbase ecosystem. Don't say anything other than, yes, it's <laughs> oh, cool. And we'll talk about it. Well, I, I just want to like, know this. Yeah, well, Superbase is having launch week. Launch this week. week, yes. And then recent was um, a part of that, so I'm excited to oh, that's to awesome. dive into that. Yeah, that was so, super fun to build. Uh, super, fun. Uh, <laughs> super fun. Uh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so it, you cannot answer this if this is part <laughs> of the conversation you're wanting to record. But they release like um, schema <laughs> visualization included like yes. data nice. and um branching which is pretty... yeah that there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff yeah i thought you were gonna say popping <laughs> that too <laughs> no but so like oh so here, this is a great rant great yeah, rant here's my rant we <laughs> sometimes we start with like a rant of some sort oh okay Got and i think i've talked about this before there is like very little actual innovation in the mm-hmm. world and so, mm-hmm. if you, like, from the things that are just not not even tech, like if you look at cars, so if you look at Toyota and Honda, every three to four years, the body styles of cars change. But mm-hmm. then, not only do they change within the Toyota brand, the changes that like Honda brand makes seem very similar to the changes that mm-hmm. Toyota makes. And if you look at phones, like Android typically has stuff a little bit before Apple, most likely, or Apple just like markets that they did stuff first and it's not necessarily true but like the innovations that they have on a year-to-year basis are usually pretty similar from one to another so there's like not that much true innovation a lot of the times in the things that we use i think it's a lot of either someone comes up with it and that's the innovative part but then everybody like goes to have that but because it's a useful feature or design or whatever so i don't think there's that much actual innovation it is true and it's super hard to innovate. So, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I can see why. Amy, um, I'm reading Amy's private chat publicly. So, <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, you, somebody's supposed to come to your house like now, or uh, well, they're supposed to be here at um, 11 Central. They're not here. They're late. Right. So, okay. and you're just whenever... letting them in. Yeah, I'm just letting them in. So I'll just okay. turn off my camera briefly. You keep going. <laughs> cool. We'll do. Um, Goose in the chat said that Superbase is built with Elixir. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, it has like post a Postgres database. Uh, yeah, Eric, did you see the big in elixir? Did you see his next comment? <laughs> the only the only true innovation is the new social media platform. X, oh my goodness! Which, how could you argue I, with that? People still don't know what to call it. I just always yeah. see now Twitter slash X. Right. And and like the I think I think they have x.com, but I still go mm-hmm. to to Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, like I don't think my fingers will unlearn how to type TWI and then enter as yeah. like well and uh Chan posted the other day. I didn't see it, but I heard about I heard about it. But he was saying, like, I finally clicked the actual X button to close something out instead of the logo. 
which oh. I didn't think about it from like a UX <laughs> from perspective. A UI, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I have like you talk about like W uh, T W enter. Like I have this muscle memory. Like mm -hmm. command L T W enter. Oh my yep. gosh! Like yep. I can't see myself changing that. Uh -uh. Uh, I know. Keith's like <laughs> It's funny how much small things like that we just are so in like we just don't even think about it mm -hmm. yeah like it's you know who i think has had the best most successful rebrand here's another controversial take uh -oh. um are you can you guess <laughs> has best the most controversial best no, rebrand no the the best rebranding within the last few years like nobody i don't feel like people even remember the name that it was previously Vercel. Oh, oh okay <laughs> Ding ding yeah, ding! Nice. Like People it. don't remember Zeit. Come uh -huh. on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, I, I just realized the title of this that I created by myself without Amy's consent <laughs> is not super specific. So the title is "Leaving a Job to Build a Company with the Founder of Recent Zena Roca." Uh, the question in the chat from <laughs> YouTube <we> is. <laughs> is asking Amy and I which company we're going to build with <laughs> Zeno, which is not not what's happening. Um, so this is about Zeno's story of leaving his company Good to go and build me. a new company of recent. Yeah, it wasn't. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah know, there's probably a better way to, like that, to anyway. reword this. It's all good. Yeah. Anyway, here we are. Well, if I'm you oh, I if can save my comment for a recording. We're good. Uh oh, is it a good comment for a recording? Yeah, it's a great comment. I'm Somehow I'm skeptical. Build the suspense. I know. <laughs> That's how we draw in viewership. So anyway, uh, we'll officially kick off in this episode. We're talking with Zeno about his journey, leaving a company, deciding to build a product, going full time with the product. I don't. I don't actually remember and don't answer if you left full time directly to go into Resend before starting on it, or like you'd already started. I don't. I don't know. That'll be like really cool details to get into. Mm -hmm. um, up to like the technology, the features. I actually got to use this coincidentally, which is why I reached out to you this week to, to join us on the podcast Excellent. and anything in between. So if people have questions, comments about that, um, these are always topics for Amy and I, I think that are, that are both super interesting people that have built things themselves. And I think we both have aspirations of someday doing something bigger than anything we've already done. And Amy's already prepared because she has 50 bigger domain names that she can. Bigger than ever before. <laughs> You're always so, um, you always lowball that number, which I appreciate. Oh, that's still, I thought I was, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Let's, uh, let's officially start. <laughs> that's really low. Yeah. How many is it? Have you said it publicly? No. It's embarrassing. But you will? It's, it's more than 50 though. It's embarrassing. This is really awkward. Do you All know right, how many get... domains do you have? Well, not that many, maybe 20. Uh... Reasonable. I, I feel like I'm in the <laughs> acceptable. Yeah, I'm in the ten range. Oh, what's a? Let me try my sound effect. Oh, oh, I forgot Amy. we have these. How many uh, domain names she has? We should. Oh, you know what would be fun is to make it like a contest. Like people have to guess, and then the person that guess okay. guesses correctly. What do we give? I do have something that I need to give away. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to do uh, the proper social promotion on it. So, and I don't know if I can tie it to this. Okay, fine. Do uh, we do need to get, we need to get swag. Did they reach though. out to you? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You're just giving it away or did you ask for a second okay. one? Uh, I'm giving it away. I already have okay. one. They reached nice. out to me and said, we want you to talk about, and I nice. said, I already have one. So I'll, is it okay if I give it away? Cool. So. That's awesome. Sweet. Uh, all right. I will officially kick us off now. Welcome everyone to another episode of Compressed FM, a podcast all about web development and design with a little bit of zest. And this episode, we're going to talk about going from leaving a job to building a company, which is Resend with the founder, Zeno. Web development and design, who would have guessed what we can do on both, even add a little zest. So turn up the volume, get ready for the best. Let's get it started in this episode of Compress. What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I am some combination of a content creator, a developer, a speaker, and a teacher. And I still have yet to decide on a formal title for myself. That can be your new thing. I know. <laughs> Guess what my title is. 
Hello, my name is Amy Dutton. I am a lead maintainer on the Redwood JS Core team. And today we have a fantastic sponsor with Contentful. So they are a composable headless CMS and just a fantastic service altogether. So they do all the wonderful CMS integrations that you would normally think they power great companies like DocuSign and Plaid. I know I've worked for clients before that have used Contentful and I believe at Jamstack conference in November, they talked about how Contentful has one of the best uh, experiences for a composable content management system. So definitely check them out. It is contentful.com. But special thanks to Conf Contentful for being a Compressed FM sponsor. And I'll throw in one more sponsor shout out, which is That Conference. That's actually the name of the conference. You can find more about it at that.us or US, and they are specifically my coffee sponsor. So they uh, make their own coffee and I am drinking the Happy Camper coffee, which is pretty sweet. I'll have a link for people that are interested. This link does not give me money, but will get you a dollar off if you're interested in ordering some for yourself. All of the sponsor stuff said and all of that out of the way. Zeno, super excited to have you on the podcast. We uh, eventually connected basically this week and now we get to connect even deeper and, and chat uh, in person on video and audio about your journey from leaving uh, your previous company to building your own. So Zeno, welcome to the podcast. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about your background? Thank you, James. Thank you, Amy, for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, yeah, I struggle a lot to, you know, introduce myself just like you, James. Like, I am a programmer. I love HTML. I love JavaScript. I love open source. Uh, I wrote a book once and I, you know, I, I just, I really see myself as a creator more than anything. You know, I like to create things and I like to share these things. Uh, that's, that's the, the base of it. Uh, today I'm the founder and CEO of Resend. And yeah, I'm just really excited to be here uh, to kick off just a, a little bit about myself. I started as a flash developer back in 2009 amy approves <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice and i got the transition got <laughs> i got the transition from action script 2 to action script 3 yes and you know really in the beginning uh i was working at a design agency and they they would do mostly flash but they were like they had to do something with CMS too. So I, I, I got my feet wet into WordPress early on. And it was really interesting to see that transition from Flash to HTML5. And one of the things, this is probably like the first lesson I had uh, back when I, when I was starting. I remember just seeing like HTML5 take over and thinking like, oh, should I follow this trend or not? Should I? Uh, <laughs> you mean the constant debate that we have every day with ourselves now? You choose exactly. wisely. <laughs> exactly. And, but that was really fun. You know, I remember just thinking, okay, if I want to, and I always had this like uh, idea of like, oh, I, I need to be the best at what I do, right? Like that, that drive. And I was like, okay, if I, you know, I was like still in the university figuring it out, what should I do? People would tell me like, oh, you have to do Java or you have to do, uh, I don't know, C Sharp. That's how you make money with uh, programming. I was like, oh, but I just really like HTML, you know, like mm -hmm. that. I really like front end. Uh, and people used to call, I don't know if you heard that term uh, before, but it was like the HTML guy, you know, that was very demeaning, like, oh, like just like that that guy that does the front end. And I was like, you know, but that's the thing I, I, I really enjoy. So uh, I got really early into HTML5. I actually built this thing. I think you will appreciate it. Let, let me share the link. This is fun. Uh, I want to get. Wait. Oh, no, we oh. lost them. <laughs> that's a the great suspense. share. <laughs> I know. The suspense is oh, killing man. me. I'm sure I'll be back in a minute. I, th I think I, I found. Bet the okay. right book, by the way, um, and put the yeah. link in the chat. So this was, and I, I didn't know this, but 14 Habits Highly Productive Developers. Uh, of course. What I... a great share. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great feature. <laughs> so this is it. I'll share the link here. This is one of my oldest GitHub repos. And let me just see what what is the date. Uh, so the first commit was 12 years ago. Uh, and there's a button on the left for you to like start 
the whole thing. Oh, but that was cool. like me, you know, doing that transition from Flash to HTML5 and learning Canvas and and that kind of stuff. Wow. <laughs> That is this really is awesome. Neat. Yeah, it is. It's super neat, right? And... Uh, and James, did you notice he said Canvas, not SVG? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an SVG snob, so. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Uh, James created this uh, meme generator with Canvas, <laughs> and I was like, you can do everything with an SVG. <laughs> So I recreated it with an SVG, but you cannot do this with an SVG, nor mm -hmm. should you because of performance. This is awesome, though. That's beautiful. We'll include a link uh, in the show notes for people on the podcast version. It's a, how do you even call it? Like it's a animation thing and you control like how fast it moves and what the intensity is and, mm -hmm. and things like that with sliders on the left. Like it looks particles like that really, really beautiful shapes. Yeah. yeah. Which. And that's um, impressive too. That was 12 years ago. Let's True. talk about that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. And, and it was really what I learned very early on is just like the the power of sharing the things that you're building, right? I remember yeah. writing an article about this that got picked up by Chrome Experiments, and then I met Adios Money back then, and we talked about doing like a. I remember uh, building a jQuery plugin, and yes. then. You know, I created the, this was like my first open source project actually called uh, jQuery Boilerplate. And mm -hmm. I was like, I just wanted to build a, a pattern for you to create jQuery plugins. But there was only yes. one problem. I didn't know jQuery. I, I haven't <laughs> never written a jQuery <laughs> plugin. But, and I was like, oh, let me come up with the pattern for everybody. <laughs> uh, and then I, I obviously built like a beautiful website, a nice readme. I tweeted about it. And then Smashing Magazine picked it up. Nice. Nice. This was in 2011 or something. And then it was just wild because, you know, the entire community came in. I remember there was one guy, I'm not going to mention his name, but he was very popular back then, still is a little bit today. And he just bit. destroyed me on oh, no. GitHub issues. He, he wrote a, a, a pull request that said this. I, I still remember the title delete everything that way you can start again and make it better and the the change the diff was, was deleting like, everything deleting all files oh my gosh <laughs> uh, what's the point of that gosh it's wild Trolls. it's Trolls. Wild. so that that's how i started with github you want to go you know? into your github history <laughs> and find out who it is make a little scavenger hunt out of it <laughs> Yeah, uh, but that was like uh, just a, it was interesting because I learned just like how like th the ability for you to put something out there, get feedback, mm -hmm. have other people like making it better and stuff like that. That was just something I was really drawn to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I've been doing that my whole life. You know, I've, the, later in 2013, I built Dracula, which is a open source theme. Which I no. did not know. <laughs> whole, I was like, I we had just chatted. Theme. And then like Dracula is one of the most popular themes in I the world. And the like it's world, in, it, the yes, universe, it is. the universe. One hundred percent, it is. And then you posted about that on Twitter, and I was like, "Holy shit, you built that! I had no idea." So cool. Yeah, you know, something's popular when it has a Wikipedia page, and Dracula has one. So wow, <laughs> wow you've arrived. You've arrived. Yeah, I that... did. I did want to step back and ask you a quick question, though, mm -hmm. because you were talking about you submitted this thing, this person mm -hmm. that's kind of popular. Mm -hmm. tore you apart and i know mm -hmm. that's for a lot of people their worst nightmare when they contribute yep. things or like write a blog post like that's their worst nightmare so if you could just talk a little bit about like how you process that and how you think about it now yeah. um because i don't want people to be afraid of that and keep them from creating content or putting stuff out yeah. into the world i feel like the community today is very much aware of that type of behavior and they know how to react and they know how to you know not incentivize that kind of, the type of behavior i feel like mm -hmm. in the beginning of open source you hear all these stories from linus torvalds and, and the way that he would approach the community and he would be very harsh too and you still have examples like that today but i feel like today's is very different and i remember being extremely sad and extremely disappointed and feeling like a failure like here i am using my free time to build mm -hmm. this thing 
I spend so much time on the websites, spend so much time on the readme, a part of like the actual source code of that thing. And then seeing that being like just destroyed publicly, I felt like a failure. And the way I looked at it was like, okay, I can just hide and delete this repo and, you know, uh, or I can try to make it better. And I remember just reading a lot of stuff from Eddie who was on uh, AOL back then. <laughs> he didn't even join Google. And I talked to Adios Money and I was like, man, we should like make it better. Like, like, can you help me? And then we figure it out. And he helped me like rewrite that version. And then we put it out there and then it became a thing. Um, like, I think at, at some point, like, I don't even know how many started, maybe like 2000 or something, but that was like massive in 2000, mm -hmm. you know, 10 or 11, something like that. And um, yeah, but it, it was a tough lesson and mm -hmm. something that, yeah, it, it's the type of behavior we shouldn't even, yeah, we can't tolerate mm -hmm. nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, and I feel like the open source community shared that, that same feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the the power of the tech community or the tech community in general has evolved a lot. And I feel like there's a lot of power that comes from the support that people offer in the tech community. This is like kind of unrelated, but I had a whole thing. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast and I could talk, talk about this later with people in more detail, but like posted a picture of my baby like on my desk mm -hmm. and Twitter went wild Saw and somebody that. directly like quote tweeted it and called me out <clears throat> for using my child as clickbait when this person had basically done the same thing and it was like a whole thing and i was like super upset about it for 30 minutes and then the comments started pouring in in defense of me and like we shouldn't we shouldn't be judging people like james is like enjoying his time like being a father like all these things and what that turned into like this really net positive experience for me because i could feel the power and the support of the community and i think situations like probably what you experience if that happened now, a similar thing would happen in response to that of calling it out and saying, this is not how we treat people that are using their free time to build stuff that's beneficial for the community. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And I, I remember seeing that and I was like, man, this is so unfair. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. how can <laughs> someone say anything like this? It's crazy. It was, it was a very weird experience, um, but a hard pivot. Do you want to mm -hmm. jump into like, the idea or like the idea of leaving a job, working on resend, mm -hmm. were you working on resend before you left the job and then you, and then you decided to go full time or like, what was, what was that journey like? Yeah. You know, I always, you know, for every single job that I had throughout my career, I always had to do something with email and mm. it has always been like a frustrating experience to be honest. Like I remember <laughs> for Dracula, this open source community, we, we had like maybe 7,000 people on the on the mailing list. And I was using MailChimp and paying 150 bucks for MailChimp. I was like, oh my gosh, mm. this is so expensive. And it doesn't feel like this was built for me as a software engineer. Maybe it was yeah. built for like a product marketer or yeah. product manager. But, you know, as an engineer, it doesn't feel natural. So the sum of all of those micro frustrations along the way, you know, I've used Postmark, uh, at my previous jobs, I was working as a VP of developer experience at WorkOS. And we were using Postmark there. We had a Magic Link product and we were having mm -hmm. some problems with spam. And I just remember, again, being super frustrated. And I was like, oh, this is like, no one is really trying to solve this problem. And as I started to look into the options, so I looked into SendGrid and Mailgun and like everything that's out there, um, I was just like, starting to look different patterns like oh all these companies started in 2008 2009 they all have been acquired by now and we all know what happens when tech companies are acquired or most <laughs> of the time that that's what happened like prices go up yep. now you see contact sales all over the place you have to <laughs> schedule a demo and you're like mm -hmm. i just want to play around and <laughs> once i play around on a saturday afternoon for 50 minutes and if I feel like, oh, maybe that's good enough, then I will talk to my team yeah. Monday morning, right? Like, I don't want to get in a call and, and all that. So I was just, like, very frustrated with the, the things that were available back then. And uh, Boo, who is my co-founder at WorkOS, we always talked about, like, oh, we should do a side project together. We should do a side project. I'm all about side projects. I absolutely love them. That's how I learn things, you know, mm -hmm. that I, I 
I feel like that's, that's how one. you. Yeah, it's how you express your creativity is beautiful. I, I yep. we could we could do a whole episode yes. on, on side projects. <laughs> and these are um, all common topics that we like we drill to in about. every yeah. episode. I'd love to talk about absolutely. Yeah. So um, we just talked about that, and we're like just doing an exercise of like how would it look if we built the stripe of email or the Vercel mm -hmm. of email? How would that look like if we had to rethink? SendGrid in 2023, how different would SendGrid be? So that was just like us playing around with this idea. And then one day I sent to a friend of mine and then he started using and I was like, dude, don't do that. I don't even have like uh, <laughs> monitoring or anything. I'm not maintaining this. And he added to production and yeah. I was like, no way. <laughs> like, and, and then I was so like, this okay. person is a regular developer, just re ready to ship stuff to, to prod. <laughs> exactly. And he was working at a startup, which was like fairly like successful. And I remember just thinking, okay, if you're using this and it's helping you, here's a Stripe payment link. Uh, and then he paid. So that was the moment where I was like, oh, I think we have, I think we have a product. Yeah. And that was the day I applied to Y Combinator. So that was the mm. aha moment of like, oh, okay, I think there's something here. Um, and then we got into IC and then, yeah, it was a, a whole thing from there. Wow. I saw a stat the other day that said that most CEOs do not have a front end background. That they're coming mm -hmm. from a back end perspective. So I'm curious, um, just how you feel like your experience with front end has contributed to your success as a CEO. I can call it one yeah. thing I want you to add mm -hmm. on to in addition to that response is the Rubik's Cube. Everybody <laughs> has to go check this out. The Rubik's Cube on the cover of it <laughs> of recent.com. Pause the episode if you're listening on audio. <laughs> go check it out, look at it, and then come back and finish. But continue with your uh, answering Amy's question. Yeah. Uh, recently, I went to fig, uh, the, the config conference from Figma. Uh -huh. And there was a talk from Brian Chesky about how he was the only CEO on Fortune 500 that came from a design background and how that made him stronger. That, uh -huh. That's a fantastic talk, by the way. It's on YouTube if you guys want to check that out. But I remember... Uh, I think for me, what's really important is this. We, we were just talking about like innovation very mm -hmm. like early on, right? And I'm not necessarily doing something that is extremely innovative, innovative right? Like we're building a service to send emails. Uh, this existed 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. And I think it will still exist for the next 15, 20 years uh, from now. So if I'm not innovating... And I, they're like extremely established players in this market. It's not like, oh, maybe there's one or two. No, like they're, they're extremely established. How can I even stand out? How can I send a message to people to say like, hey, we're different. We are not what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And I think my background in front end, and I still do front end on weekends and, you know, evenings, like uh, I do the the CEO thing from nine to five <laughs> and then from eight to midnight, I do the front end thing. I love it. <laughs> and I feel like it helped me tremendously and it's our edge. It's how we, mm -hmm. we show that we are different. And I care so much about the details and that Rubik's cube is, is an example of that. So here's how I think about it as a founder my most important real estate in the web is my website, my landing page, especially that first load, you know, like the above the fold, like th mm -hmm. that place, that, that's like gold for me. So imagine placing a random web GL that is like, I don't know, 600 pixels by 600 pixels, which occupies almost like the entire space of the page. Like, why should we do that? It's even hard to, to justify to my team, like, oh, this is why we should do this. And for me, I really want to send a message that, hey, we, we, we are different. We're not what you used to. Uh, we, we care about the technical details. We care about building something that, is, that feels special. And 
this is for you. If you appreciate this kind of thing, this product is for you. And I can write a big text about this and I can talk about the values that we have as a company, or I can just demonstrate that. And I feel like that's the best way to demonstrate all of this without saying a single word. Um, and that's how we think about everything that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when we had the wait list. So we had a wait list for like three or four months. Uh, and the only way for you to get into the wait list was to use your keyboard. You had to press C or something to uh, go to that. And again, why, why is that? Why not a button where you can just click? And again, it, this was to show that, to, to send a very hidden message of like, hey, I know as a developer, you care about your keyboard shortcuts. We care about it too. Wow. It doesn't make sense to have a keyboard shortcut on a marketing landing page. It doesn't. Like you're not, <laughs> it's not like you're going to that page every day to do an action. It doesn't. But that sends a message. Yep. And mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot about this. And I, if I didn't have that front-end background, I don't think we would be able to get to those insights. There, wow. there are so many services right now or just that um, I think don't think the way that you do, mm -hmm. which is fantastic because there are so many front end developers now that are becoming full stack that with like Next and SvelteKit and Redwood and all these other things as a front end developer, it's a lot easier to get into back end and become full stack. And so as a front end developer approaching projects, you mentioned like the weekend hack. Like that's the first thing that I check is how fast can I get up and running? Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that within 15 minutes, if it's not a delightful experience, why am I going to waste my time? And so that attention to detail really does pay off. Um, James, I'll quote you because <laughs> I know you love I quote, quote myself oh. all the time. But you've talked about before that some of the best um, like dev, like developer advocacy is your dev experience and how you take mm -hmm. care of your users. Yeah, I was gonna kind of call that out specifically too, like quote yourself too. <laughs> well, no, to to go back to Zeno's comments about the reason that was so important was to be able to communicate very subtly, and you you said the word hidden. This message of like we are developers together, mm -hmm. and I think that is super subtle. It's super not in your face, but it also is super powerful. And it's been cool just to like I just tried recent this week for the first time I needed to send emails and I posted on Twitter. I was like, what should I use? And mm -hmm. I got like the typical responses, but the overwhelming percentage was recent. And it had been on mm -hmm. my, like I've been following tweets mm -hmm. and stuff that, that you've put out. Uh, so it was already kind of top of mind for me and probably mm -hmm. what I was going to use and to see the developer community on Twitter, just lay or lean into that. Um, I think is a testament to that uh, relationship and trust with developers. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's sad that we live in a world where people don't really care that much about details because I feel like they do make such a, a big yep. difference, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you're talking about developer experience. Yep. The, I feel like it, I see it as a ladder. You tried something very small, you go to the website and then you're like, oh, okay, this is nice. And then you go to the docs, you're like, oh, this is interesting. And then you see the, the code snippet, okay, I get it. And then you sign up, oh, it's easy. You make your first API <laughs> call. Okay, this is good. Now, now I like this. The opposite is also true. You go to the website and then you're like, ah, yeah. Like there's a th this is this looks mm -hmm. weird. And then you go to the docs. There's a typo. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. they, should, they should have taken care of this. Okay. You sign up and then it's like there, there's so much friction. And then to you try to send a request and then it fails. This is so frustrating. And that's the difference between a brand that people love and a brand mm -hmm. that you, you just don't care. That's the worst you can, you can do for a brand. Like people not caring, not even people hating, but people not yeah. even like paying mm -hmm. attention. And yeah. I remember having a conversation with Guillermo Rauch, uh, like around like three weeks ago or something. I went to the Vercel AI meetup that, that they were doing here in San Francisco. And we talked about exactly what you just described, Amy, that, that use case of like, okay, you try it out and, uh, you know, this goes to folks like us and also like CTOs of like Series C and D companies. They, they're playing around with stuff on the weekends. And then if they face the minimum friction and they see something that feels off, you're now delaying. This is what Guillermo was telling me. Like the, now that CTO is delaying the decision of maybe 
trying that again or suggesting to the mm -hmm. team, like maybe by three months or six months. And now you, you have to do all those steps again to gain their trust for, for them to even like look it up again. Uh, yeah. It's not like you lost that person forever, but now you're delaying that. So mm -hmm. I think a lot about friction. And this is one of the reasons why we started recent. I remember going to SES and then it took me like two days to get a permission to use my account or Postmark. Mm -hmm. I had like one day that I had to submit. I was like, no, like we should solve this as software, not like mm -hmm. with like a manual process. So yeah, I just... Yeah, I hate friction with all my where, heart. <laughs> yeah, where do you draw the line between like ship early and get user feedback and then you have this, it needs to be polished so that we don't lose people when they actually try it. Yeah, speed and quality. Oh I my know, gosh. There's that like, triangle, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I wish I could just say like, oh, uh, you should <laughs> just like, do this. Just, <laughs> just do this or prioritize yeah. this or, or that. But the reality is like, if you really want to build something that people care, you just need both and you just have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So if that means working 10 hours instead of eight, you know, that's what I, what I would do. Like, I remember with our website, there were two times where we were like, okay, we're going to ship next Tuesday. And then next Tuesday comes and we're like, mm, this is not there yet. We, sh you know, like we have this thing where uh, we say integrate this afternoon or this morning or, or tonight. And this change is based on your time zone. If you will, if you go to the website now, you'll see this. And we change even the, the syntax highlight. There's a there's an icon. There's like an envelope icon. If you go there on the afternoon, the light comes from the center. If you go in the yes. morning, it comes from one side. <laughs> like yes. This evening goes to another side. And when it's the weekend, so after Friday, 6 p.m., we change to purple and then we say integrate this weekend. So hmm. no one knows wow. this. No one cares yeah. about this probably, <laughs> uh, but I do. And yeah. I feel like if people see it, they're going to appreciate it. Yep. And that's yeah. the type of people I want to work with, like people that appreciate quality. Um, because if they, do, like, at least for me, if, if it doesn't have that, then I would rather not even do it. You know, mm -hmm. I'll just, I don't know, play PlayStation or, or something else. Like I, I, I want to build something that, that I care, you know. Did you come up with a lot of those details or did somebody else on your team? It's a combination, you know, like okay. the lightning, like depending on the time of the day. No, definitely not me. Uh, okay. This was like the, the designer that was working on that icon. Uh, the the integ like we wanted to for the landing page to feel dynamic. This was an idea from someone on the team, too. And, and that's okay, you know, like you just have to, like, how do you foster an environment where these ideas come up to light? Yes. Uh, and yeah, it's just like a relentless focus on quality, which, uh, yeah, I think people appreciate when they see it. Mm -hmm. And how big is your team? Uh, we're four people now. Okay, awesome. Super cool. Uh, there was a question that I, I am particularly interested in in getting answered is just any details you can share about the process of, of getting into YC Combinator and then uh, also what it was like being a part of that. And for uh, maybe also just give a, a brief intro to what YC is. I think a lot of us kind of take for granted of we, we hear of companies going through YC, we have an idea, but for people who've never heard of it, what is it? What was the process to get into it? And what was it like going through it? Yeah, so YC is this startup accelerator, and it is the most famous startup accelerator in the world. They they backed Stripe, Airbnb, Dropbox, Algolia, uh, just like so many companies. Um, Superbase went through. We Superbase haven't gone back to the Superbase conversation, but they went through YC as well. Flight Raycast, control. Flight Control, <laughs> yeah. Raycast. Yeah, so, so many companies. Anyway, sorry, I, keep going. And I've, I've always admired them. And I was always yeah. like, wow, that's like another <laughs> level type of program, right? So exactly. when we when we were doing recent, uh, just like as an idea, as an exploration, we applied to IC just for fun, just for like, <laughs> we're going to just learn the process of like, because yeah. the, their form to apply, it's amazing. There's so many questions that... As you're like filling that out, you learn about yourself and you learn about the product that you're building. So we applied. 
absolutely no hope that we would get in. We knew it's like just impossible to get in, but we're just going to apply. And then maybe two or three weeks later, I get an email saying, oh, we're, we want to invite you to interview. And I was like, okay. <laughs> You're like, they what? must have the wrong email address. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure they trigger like the wrong email. Like, yeah, this is. Because email is hard. They need right? recent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, okay, this, uh, this is insane. And I was extremely stressful, uh, uh, stressed about this. I, I was traveling with my family to Brazil to visit family. This was at the end of the year. So the World Cup was happening. Uh, Christmas re was right out there. And I was like, oh, no, what's, what's going to happen? And the question that I had was, is, is getting to IC a blocker to start this company like mm -hmm. if we mm -hmm. let's say we go to this interview and then we fail because it's an insane interview it's like 10 minutes you don't mm -hmm. even say hi you join and then they're like okay tell me about your product it's it's great it's so hard like it's it's insane so i was like okay and i was super stressed i'm like okay if we fail if i don't do well in this interview so I was really, really uh, thinking about this. And then I talked to a couple of friends of mine. I was like, okay, let, let me do this. Let me see if I can raise money outside of YC and to really understand if the future of this company is dependent of us getting to YC or not. So I remember I talked to a friend of mine and then he said, oh, no, I would invest. If you guys did this, I, I would invest in this. <laughs> wait, wait, here is this just mm -hmm. for context. This was in December. I was going to oh, say, okay. this so can't be now. long ago. Okay, yeah, just, wow. So this is so, uh, seven, eight months ago at this okay, point. Okay, I was just thinking economics. Yeah. It's not like people are throwing around cash. They're like serious right. investors. A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not at all. And and then this friend connected me with the CTO of Plaid, uh, Jean Denis. And then I talked mm. to him and he's like, oh, yeah, we, we would invest like 40K. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So that that's interesting. So this that's was really... Yeah. The... the, 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 the <laughs> The cool thing about this is that it gave me the confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to this YC interview, and even if I don't get in, that's fine. And the power dynamics changed because when I joined that interview, I said, I'm doing this regardless of mm -hmm. getting into YC or not. I'm sure if that we get in, yeah, has something to do with it. If we get in, beautiful. It's going to be amazing. We're, we're going to have a great time. But if you guys don't accept me, that's fine. I'm so into this idea. I think we have something. Um, so then we we interviewed, and then once we got the news, yeah, I was just, yeah, I was like, this is the opportunity of my life. That first like first few days, I was sleeping like two or three hours per mm -hmm. night. I was so out, like I, I wasn't myself. I was just like so like I had to move to San Francisco. I, I was living in LA. So I had to come back with my wife and my one-year-old daughter. And then like we packed everything, we put stuff in our car, and then we drove to SF. Just insanity. Um, where did, yeah. where did you say you were coming from? From Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. LA. So yeah. And that's pretty, uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember the distance. That's a, for people, mm -hmm. we have uh, maybe about Two thirds of our listeners are international, or half mm -hmm. of our listeners. Probably, yeah. So um, I'm trying to remember. I was about to say miles, which is not helpful for them. <laughs> or, uh, yeah. How many it's kilometers? How, how many? It's like a five hour drive. Or is it's it like more? a yeah, like six or seven hours drive. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's so cool. And then, like, really quickly, and there's another question I want to come back to from the chat. But what was the process of like? going through the program i in in my head and I've, I've never really talked to anyone in depth about this but it seems like it would be really really super intensive but also you're surrounded by super talented people in a lot of different aspects so what, what was it like going through the program yeah so they have two batches per year one is a winter batch and a summer batch and on each batch they have 250 companies wow. and typically wow. Each company has like two or three founders. Um, mm. So imagine like you're surrounded by a lot of people. They yeah. divided you in groups and in, in sections depending on what you're building. So we had an open source section that we would talk to folks around that. And you just learn a lot uh, from people around you. Um, 
they, you know, you, you meet people that are way ahead of you and people that are a little bit, you know, behind and you learn different ideas from both uh, types of uh, profiles. And uh, there are, you have to move extremely fast because what you're doing, it's a three month program. In our case, we joined in January this year, and then you have until like uh, March, and then on April is demo day when you're pitching your product to the investors. And yeah, it was just wild to go over that experience. Every week you need to demonstrate growth. So it's not like, oh, we're just building. No, like what's your, what are your numbers? Why? What's yeah. your MRR? Like how are you growing in terms of revenue? Uh, like. So it's, it's a lot of pressure, but it just puts you in a different state of mind in terms of sense of urgency and uh, what you have to do to make this happen. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to play the silly games when you're in of like, um, but you know, for us, I was like, if I'm joining this thing, I'm coming in to be, you know, I want to be the top one company. I don't want to be mm -hmm. the, the 15th best company like so i remember uh in on december i bought the domain recent.com i paid 25k out of my like pocket i was, I was like, gonna ask you about that because <laughs> i imagine that was not a cheap domain yeah and it was all like with that idea of like we're not joining to be just like another company that maybe yeah. a year from now we, we're dead you know we make some noise and then we, we die yeah. so yeah, it was wow. uh, pretty pretty wild. I, I'm going to go out on a limb really quickly, Amy, and mm -hmm. say that you've probably not even spent $25,000 with all the domains that you own. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, that is so true. Yeah, I've not. Uh, now, I don't know what that would... The number that I have, how much that accumulates over the life Over years, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. not that much. Um, but maybe, I don't know. Between uh, that and Starbucks, if you just like kicked both of those habits. And <laughs> I know. Yeah, and Chick-fil-A. Oh, Chick-fil-A, you know, so it's much fine. Money. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Um, yeah. Dave Ramsey, I don't know if people are listening to him, but we've gone through his stuff several times and he has this like this feel about like coffee and smoking, which I don't smoke, but if you add all those things up, this is how much you could save. Uh, okay, so on topic, uh, we've also interviewed Brandon Bear, mm -hmm. who is behind Flight Control, and nice. he went through Y Combinator. So I'll include a link to that particular episode as well if people just want to hear about a different experience. But I think the thing that surprised me when he was talking about it was what exactly what you said, that there are people – participating that are at different stages. I just assumed yeah. everybody comes in with this idea, but he was saying we had already started to make progress on things when we came to Y Combinator. And so the curriculum kind of adjusts to you and you help set the milestones and saying, this is what I want to achieve within the time. And then they'll help you achieve those goals. Exactly. And it, it truly is what do you what do you make out of it? You know, mm -hmm. I, I remember in the beginning, I was like, oh, this is going to be a great pool of customers for me. You know, I want to sell recent to them. And I would, you know, start a conversation with a founder <laughs> pitching them. Oh, you should you buy think this. about that. <laughs> All of your cohort. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I want to meet every single founder from my cohort and yeah. I want to sell to every single one of them. And I quickly realized like, wow, that's so silly because I'm here to just like, create relationships and learn from these people. And it's going to be a much better experience if we just try to be friends. And yeah. turns out if you do that, if you come from a genuine place, you do end up getting those results. Like today, mm -hmm. so YC, they have this internal community called Bookface. It's like a play on, on Facebook. So you have like a forum and you can uh, have deals on this community. And there's like Superbase, they have a Superbase deal where they give you $100,000 for you to use Superbase. And we built like, and we, we put out this deal for YC companies. And when you look at our cohort, W23, and you look at all the deals, we are the number one. Like there are 80 plus Y Combinator companies already using recent from all, all sorts That's of awesome. batches. The second place is like, I think they have like 25 companies using. So we really stood out in terms wow. of, you know, this is for you. The, and That's awesome. And if Y Combinator truly is the place where the best founders are, 
if that's if that's real, just meeting their their bar is going to be super hard. So that's how we 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 felt about this. Like we need to build a product where these people are are happy, and if they are, maybe other people will be happy too. There's a question from a chat that I think is uh, relevant to that, and the question is: When do you know you've built a great product? Like, what are some of those feedback signs? that you get, and I'll call out one for you from, from an external perspective. And I kind of mentioned this earlier, like I, I kept seeing people share about recent people I trust, right? Like that, that kind of scaling out visibility through other people that have those successful journeys of onboarding that we talked about earlier are key to the point when I was looking for options, people were sending me stuff and recent was already pretty top of mind for me. So that was, that was definitely from my perspective. Um, I would say like, feedback of what you're doing is working, but what are some of the, some specific things maybe that you've seen from individual developers or from developer communities or Twitter or wherever that makes you feel like you're building something that really addresses issues that they have? Yeah. I wish I could say uh, that, you know, I, I, I think that recent already solves all the problems that, <laughs> that people have. I think we're far from it. Uh, I don't, I don't have the confidence. Like people talk about like product market fit and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, wow, we're so far away from this. <laughs> like, I feel like there's so much we need to build and we're really just getting started. Um, but I try to look at, at this just like I would do, you know, as a developer, how do I make decisions? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't make decisions with, when someone just cold email me saying, hey, try my product. This is the great, the best <laughs> thing in the world. That's not how I make decisions because I don't have the pain maybe that, mm -hmm. that that product is trying to solve. But if I'm listening to people that I trust, just like you said, like, oh, recent, recent, they're talking about this thing all the time. I don't need an email solution right now. That's okay. I'm fine with what I have. Or maybe I, I, like, I, I just don't have a project that I can use. But then the moment that I need... Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what are what are people using nowadays? Oh, I hear about this thing all the time. And maybe you even post and say, hey, what are you guys using? Or like, oh, what's in your mind? And then I hear even more, um, you know, social proof around it. I feel like that's extremely powerful. Uh, so it's a combination of like, yeah, you know, what are people using? Is this right for me? Because maybe that's amazing. That's a product that the the whole Ruby on Rails community loves it. And then I try it with TypeScript and Vercel and Next, and then it doesn't really fit. Hmm. Um, so you you have to try it for yourself and you have to say, okay, yes. It, it's not like I'm just following what other people are saying. I I tried it and yes, that's, that's actually really good uh, because you don't want to be just fooled by hype, uh, right? No. But yeah, I feel, I feel like those two things, they... They complement each other, and then and then you say, "Okay, I'm going with this thing." I got distracted by one of the I comments. Did too. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep up with the chat, it kind of threw me off. Um, biggest challenge, even beyond all of the stuff we're talking about, you have more than a decade of experience, and you have to have a one-page resume. <laughs> Pretty, so, pretty random, but I thought that was funny. Well, and I, <laughs> sorry, they said sorry. Let me respond to that really quick. Um, it might be a little bit of a side quest here, but Rusty, I would say too, like, I don't know if this was a serious comment, <laughs> but <laughs> when you're creating your resume, you also want to think about what you want to do. Like how, mm -hmm. what are the things, the projects that you want to be doing in the future? And so if you have things on your resume that don't support your end goals, you don't have to include those. Um, no. So I would say the same thing is true for like a portfolio. Okay, sorry. Side quest. I think we've also kind of moved past <laughs> the like super hard requirement of one page. Like I think most people mm -hmm. will say like if you really have condensed it to what's appropriate, having two pages yeah. is is totally fine. So we'll see. Um, this is super cool. I like just on a personal note, I am super excited for everything that that you're doing and and what uh -huh. you've accomplished so far. Again, like this is probably the type of episode that Amy and I both enjoy, like both of us having aspirations for creating things and eventually looking towards like having products and that sort of stuff. So thank you, first of all, for, um, for joining us and for sh sharing your story. And if all of us are ready, we can move into our final section of the podcast, which is our picks and plugs section where we pick 
Uh, something that we enjoy often is something we bought on Amazon, which mine will be obviously something we watched or read, and then uh, something we want to plug, a community that we're in or a community that we support or something we built, et cetera. Uh, I'll kind of, actually, I won't leave it open. I'll go first because I am ready. So I have three uh, nephews three? that are. Oh, I you say three picks. Three, I have three picks. <laughs> I have three nephews, uh, nine. 13 and 15 and they all love crocs do they the shoes and i like <laughs> never ever wanted a pair of crocs because i thought they were like super lame and like middle school maybe when they became popular for us i don't i don't exactly remember when anyway i bought crocs because they you made did. them seem cool and i'm wearing them now actually i can't lift my leg high enough <laughs> with my color? standing desk uh, these are just like a, a dark gray or like a. a Did you get gray. any? What are they called? The oh yeah pins or whatever. No, I don't have any pins. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll build up my uh, my pin game in the future, but uh, none for now. It's but they not called on Amazon, pins though. We're showing our age. There's some, there's a some special sort of name. name. It's like yeah. giblets or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone comments in the chat. Inadequate does same, but once you get them, you won't take them off. And so far, I've I've worn them uh, in the two days I've had them. So. <laughs> Googled shoe charms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basically what it is. Anyway, like, they, like, just seem cool to me now that my nephews uh, are all in some gibbets. Okay. So I got mine on Amazon, and they were 30 bucks, which is pretty hard. I mean, they've got tons of colors and sizes and stuff, so it's pretty hard to beat. So I've enjoyed them so far. And then for my plug, I'm going to plug my Astro course. So I, I finally gotten down to recording videos, and I'm at, like, 15 out of 80 which still seems like there's a long way to go but i feel like i've made a lot of progress in getting to where i am now and i think the finishing the videos is just going to continue to get easier as i work out some of the kinks along the way so that'll be released um don't know when this will cut this episode will come out but it should be uh released by the end of august going into september so uh if people are interested in learning how to build a super powerful markdown site which uses ssr and databases and comments and all kinds of stuff uh, it's at astrocourse.dev. Oh, you know what you should do? You you send an email after a comment was made. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like what? Oh, oh, so, oh okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> email notifications. Well, I do have, I don't think, Zeno, I actually confirmed this with mm -hmm. you. In one of the videos I'm working on, um, I am using recent to send email. So it's actually, it's a, the idea, it's just for demo. It's not to actually build mm -hmm. out, but it's a, content calendar generator so each week it prompts you to log in and just say like here's the topic of something that i learned last week or i'm building this week mm -hmm. it'll generate 10 tweets for you and and send those to you and it didn't actually like schedule them yet but you could take that stuff and nice. and kind of using, them off AI? The week. using ai is that what you said uh, yeah the open ai nice. sdk yeah Okay, I gotta yeah. try that out, please. Yeah, I need this in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the video on that will be out um, in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be. And then I thought about doing yeah. a dedicated. Here's how. Here's the easiest way to send emails with Node.js or something to use resend as well. So keep an eye out. I'll send you a link when I do. Cool. Are you ready? Either of you want to go next? I I'm ready. Do it. But uh, okay. So I'm going to pick a podcast called The Blog Air. I, uh, this was really recently, um, but it's just a quick season. There's like 11 episodes in it, but it talks about the power of blogging like in 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. and the power that it had on the music industry and specifically like hip hop and rap um, and how these bloggers basically took down some like the infrastructure that you would normally think of that control music, the gatekeepers. So mm -hmm. you have like uh, executives making decisions about what goes to record and things like that. And so anyways, this podcast talks about that whole process and just the power of blogging. So I've really enjoyed it. So you should check it out. The other thing uh, I'm going to plug the learn, build, teach community. So this is a discord server that James runs and you can go to learn, build, teach.com and check it out. Do you need to run get your doorbell? Okay, all right. <laughs> Zeno, if you're ready, go ahead. Yes. Um, so what's the first one again? The... Uh, pick. So something you've enjoyed, Picks. something you bought okay. or watched or read, eaten, something like that. Okay. I would say I have two picks. Uh, one is a book. So we're, we talked a lot about 
you know, being a founder and stuff like that. And a big part of it is like sales, which sounds mm -hmm. extremely not interesting and, and boring <laughs> and kind of scary as well. Uh, but I, I've started to read this book called Founding Sales. Um, so I highly recommend that. If you're not into books, that's totally fine. The, there's one documentary that I absolutely love. And we also talked about like this attention to detail and, and stuff like that. So if you like that kind of subject, there's a documentary called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. And it's amazing. It's like this 80-year-old uh, sushi um, guy in Japan that just does like the, the best sushi in the world. And uh, there's just like a, a lot that goes into that. And plug, I have to say recent, right? Like we <laughs> are spending so much time uh, on it. And uh, we just, we recently released some really cool features like, you know, support for SMTP, uh, or you can use our, you know, API that works with Next and 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 Vercel. If you are using Superbase, we we launched yesterday a Superbase integration, and I was just checking right now after we, we we're just briefly talking about this. We already have so we launched yesterday morning. We already have eighty eight Superbase projects that are connected with Recent. Wow, that's awesome. So yeah, please try that out. You know, I'll love to to hear comments and yeah. That's I'm glad you uh, mentioned that again because that was mm -hmm. something we were supposed to get to in the main part of the of the podcast, which we forgot. Um, really quickly on the Superbase integration, super exciting. One of Amy and I's favorite products. So that's like they're amazing. You two working together integration is really incredible. The integration specifically is this for. And Superbase, you can have like Magic Link um, login. They also can do like password reset emails. So does Resend fit in of like it replaces the engine or the service that actually sends those emails? Is that what the connection is? Yeah, so Superbase by default, they have a SMTP server that is shared across every single user. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that every email that you send comes from superbase.io. And, mm -hmm. you, and the only way to change that is when you toggle and enable a custom SMTP server. Mm -hmm. So the way that Resend works is like, we just add all the information you need and you follow like all the steps. You're like, okay, this is my Superbase project. Mm -hmm. This is the email that I want to use. This is the domain. And then we populate. So then we can, you know, you can send all of your Superbase off emails without uh, using their default service, which has some li limitations around late rate limits too. You can only yep. send four emails per hour and with resend, you can send like, like the, the default is 10 emails per second. So mm -hmm. um, you can just do way more, um, you know, with, with that. And I feel like it's just like the perfect integration. Yeah. Those two things, they come together really, really well. I, I use myself for my own project. So I feel like people will, will enjoy it. Nice. And you recently, the, SM, the ability to do SMTP, of get the SMTP credentials of Resend to put somewhere else, not just Superbase. That's relatively recent as well, right? Yes. Uh, this Thursday, Tuesday, we we actually launched it. So <laughs> uh, if you're using customer.io, off zero, mm -hmm. um, like WordPress, you know, payload CMS, like all of these different services, uh, you can now enter. Or if you're using some backend framework like rails or phoenix or django now you can just put it out over there and then it works so it's really not nice. following you from afar i guess for mm -hmm. months and, and probably the last year and super excited about everything to come with recent in the future same i love what you're doing i love redwood i, I love what you're doing too amy so uh yeah this was really fun thank you for having me awesome all right in the meantime that's all we got all right, we're still technically live. I think the stream froze yeah, on. Froze. Yeah, all of my comments to Twitch like failed. Um, and it, which is unfortunate. But this, the full recording oh, is still back. on YouTube. Okay. Uh, well, we're done now. So sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry that we missed. Um, really quickly, the last like ten minutes, we were or last couple of minutes, we were talking about the recent integration into Superbase and uh, recent supporting SMTP. So you could take those credentials to other places and integrate recent into 
WordPress or Superbase or you said Payload CMS, which is one I just came across recently as well. Um, and basically anything that can accept um, SMTP credentials to then generate transactional emails of some sort. Exactly. Cool. Um, oh, we could hear. Okay, so they heard most of that. What'd you say, Amy? Oh, <laughs> Zina, I was going to say, uh, we need to get you as a Redwood partner. And I was mm -hmm. messaging somebody on the slide and they're like, oh, we're, we're on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like talking to, to David, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. David Pine. Pearson. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we, we just added to our docs and we're, we're going to be adding That's to awesome. our landing page too. So awesome. like you'll see nice. the Redwood logo so there. Proud. The there. Yeah. <laughs> so proud. All right. If y'all are ready, I'll go ahead and actually quit the stream. Thanks everyone for listening in. And uh, I don't know what else. If Thanks. Leave a comment. Follow us. Support us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see you all later. Thanks, everyone.